Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, we are going to implement a moving crane in our previously modeled hanger and apply some moving loads and some offsets to that hanger. So I'm going to open my hanger project that was done recently. Please notice that it was modeled entirely on this channel in the video links above. So please take a look on that video before you start with this one. This is my hanger. I just basically select all my purlins and apply an offset to this purlin because purlins are usually above the truss elements. So I want to apply the offset on that. Also, uh, we connect our bracings not always to the center of the member, but sometimes to the upper or lower flange. So I can do that too. For me, I will just uh, offset my purlins to kind of prove the point. So to do that, I will select my purlins. So I click on the uh, section selection tool and select all my purlins. Now offsets have been explained in a previous video that is linked above. Please also check that video before we continue talking about our video today. Now to continue, I'll just go to geometry, go to additional attributes and apply me an offset. Now I want my connection to be on the lower flange. I hit apply and now all my purlins are connected on the lower flange. Now this still doesn't seem to work because, I mean, the section here is not really connecting. Yes, I know it's connecting to the lower flange, but the lower flange is connecting to the center of the uh, section. You need to add some extra spacing to, to uh, account for the T-section that is used in the truss. So you can actually modify your lower flange itself, although I highly suggest not to. I suggest to, whenever you uh, modify something that is default, to apply, to add a my word to it just to denote that it's your modified thing. Now I'm going to offset this more in the Z axis and I'll just modify this to 70, 70 and change that. If you close the offsets, you can see that it gets back to its original position. That is because you need to uh, enable the offset view by going to display and saying offset, applying, and now you can see your offset at parents. Fantastic. And if you want to right click and go to display and go to loads, load distribution regions, you still can see that your purlin gets loaded. Your purlin gets loaded even if it's offset. Remember, offset is just an offset, but in the end, my slabs are being applied on the purlin, so everything seems to be in order. That's how you offset stuff. Now let's address the second issue I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about adding a moving load, a crane, to that hanger. So let's say that we have a crane that is a beam that moves on two wheels and is moving on two other beams. Now, it seems to be cryptic, so allow me to show you how a crane looks like. So I just googled me a crane to show you how this kind of looks like. Now, this is a crane used in a hanger. You can see that usually you have a hook that is attached to a mortar moving on a solid or rigid beam. And this beam is moving on two tracks uh, across the hanger. So, okay, let's just close that. Now, in this video, I'm only going to talk about the modeling aspect of this moving load and track. The selection of the track cross-section as well as the value of the load is something that you have to do yourself. I will only explain the theory of the modeling here. Furthermore, I want to mention that there are two options of uh, modeling the crane track. You can make a small pedestal that bulges out of the column and define crane track on that pedestal or you can just define the crane track directly on the columns like this and offset the crane track by clicking on the geometry and offsetting it. I leave it for you. I've explained the differences between you uh, offsetting via a pedestal or an own element versus you offsetting via Autodesk Robots offset command. I go to geometry, addition attributes, offsets. I'll define me an offset, crane right, I'll call it. It's 100 millimeters offsetted negative in the Y, negative because the local axis goes like this, so I need to shift it to the other side. Also, I'm measuring from this position of the section, so I'll apply that, hit the add button, and basically apply this to my beam here. And yeah, it seems it's working fine. Now, if I apply the same here, I don't think it will work, so I need to define me another offset. I'll call it train left and basically swap my signs and directions. So I just add that. Okay, so I select my crane left as defined and apply it to this beam. Now I need to apply a moving load to the crane. The crane has 
two sides upon which it moves and the loads that are produced by the crane need to be calculated from first of all from the data sheet the technical data sheet of the crane because the crane will have a technical data sheet that explains the maximum force allowed on the crane and now at, and then you will have to apply a factor of safety using your design code and apply a point load that moves on the crane track furthermore some design codes ask you to apply both a distributed load and a point load that is moving to uh, model the crane. Of course, you have to consult your own design code to understand how cranes are modeled. For me, my reason here is to show you how moving loads are modeled. So I will, I will model my crane using a moving load. But wait, there is more to this because you can see that the crane here is actually, in, is actually here, but it will produce forces on the tracks that are the reactions of the crane. Now, you don't know where this crane is. It could be anywhere. The crane could be in the center, the crane could be on the side, the crane could be on this side, you don't know. But we know that the position of the crane can vary between this position and this position. So I'm gonna simplify things and I will simply say that I will consider two point loads, which are basically whatever the crane can carry once applied on the right side, and once applied on the left side. I am approximating things because in reality, the crane will never be exactly on the right track because there is always some clearances. So there is never gonna be a reaction here which is 100% of the crane load, but I will do it anyway because I want to approximate things. Furthermore, cranes are usually resting on a set of wheels. So if the wheels are really close to each other, you can model the crane as being one single moving load on the entire track. But if the wheels are a little bit farther away, like this, like one meter or something significantly further away, then you would need to model two moving loads moving from start to finish. So I hope I'm clear with this, so let's implement that. Now to model moving loads, you simply go to loads, special loads, moving loads. Now moving loads were actually created to model bridges. So you can see that there are some ash to trucks defined here. I'm not modeling a bridge, I'm modeling a crane so I basically modify my own load. Now I'm not using any vehicle loads and I want to have my own load so I click on new and I call this crane load. So I'll define me a crane load and I want to assume that my crane is on two wheels that are spaced one meter away. So my first load is actually at x equals negative half meter and my second load is at x equals positive half meter. Fantastic so I have my two loading points. Now the loading value in kilonewton is something that you will take from the specification sheet of that crane. I will assume that the crane can carry a hundred kilonewtons, which means that you have 50 on each wheel. So I have 50 here and 50 here. And that's it. I'll just save it now or add it basically. And you can see that my crane load now is here. So I'm going to apply my crane load to this bar and to this bar. So how can I do that? Well, first of all, when you apply moving loads it will create a load case for you so I will call this crane load case so the next step is to define the line that the uh, load is gonna follow I'm gonna define me a line that starts from here and ends here so now I have a line I close that and you can see it got implemented for the step of the load I'm going to step my load each one meter if I want you can make it finer if you want and the load direction, well, remember you have defined a force, but you didn't tell him where the force is in X or in Y or in Z. You can see that the load direction is 0 in X, so nothing in X, 0 in Y, so nothing in Y, and negative 1 in Z. So if you hit the apply button, you can see that suddenly this beam is green, and you can actually show the load by going to display, load, moving load. If you hit the apply button, it asks you to analyze the structure. After you analyze it, you can see the moving load is here. So, okay, we have our moving load. You can run the analysis. So let's do that. And my moving load has been calculated. Now we have run the analysis. If you go to results, diagrams for members, and say MY, you can see that the moving load has created a moment on the track of that crane. But it's not moving, you know? Like, I thought it's a moving load, but it's not moving, right? Well, no, it's moving. And to, to show you the different positions of this moving load, you click on select component and now you can select any component you want for example you can select and move the moving load wherever you want and you can see that the beam 
behaves according to the position of the moving load. You can even animate this, which is really nice. So if you click on start, you can see that the moving load gets animated and you can see the effect of the moving load on the bending moment diagram of the track and also on the column because there is an offset, which is really nice. Uh, similarly, you can do the other beam. So I just closed that. Sorry, I just was... Uh, <laughs> I was captivated by the beauty of it, to be honest. I will do another moving load by basically uh, saying this is my crane loading case 2 because I have another beam. By the way, your line is based not on the offsetted beam, but you click it on the original beam. The offset is done by robot. So I define me a line like this, close. Now I have crane LC2. If you run the analysis now, it takes again some time. And now you can see that your crane is actually applying forces on the beam and you can select once again the case component based on the position and you can animate the case component yeah so fantastic now i have an animation of a crane that moves on the entire beam the final thing i want to talk about is okay it seems that each of those load cases has a position where you can see the uh, force on the beam however i mean there is something called influence line or i want to know what is the maximum and minimum moment that has been applied on any point during the movement of the uh, load? To do that, you can easily access this by going to something called LC positive, which gives you the envelope. This is the envelope of bending moment diagram that was applied on the beam and columns when the load was moving on the beam. And this is for LC1. If you go to LC2, you will see the envelope of the other beam and this or other track and this envelope is what you use to design so that's all what i wanted to cover about moving loads and model finalization of my hanger i hope that you enjoyed the video if you have enjoyed the video please like share subscribe and comment and especially subscribe it helps a lot for the future i will i might be using the moving load for future modeling of bridges and finally as per usual this is the civil engineering essentials channel and we will catch you in the next video